Hopefully during the next episode of Project Binky, we'll be stripping the car down ready for paint. So we thought we'd take the opportunity, while it's still mostly complete, to go around the car and answer some of the questions that keep cropping up in the comments. We've known for a while now that we've got the best followers in the YouTubeiverse. The problem is there's that many of you commenting nowadays that whilst we read them all, it's pretty much impossible to reply to them on an individual basis. So we thought we'd try something like this instead. We've covered some of this in previous episodes and Q&As, but it's been such a long time since we've done one, we thought we'd bring you bang up to date. And we've got quite a few newer viewers, so we might as well start right back at the beginning. Well, we had one. Uh, we had a rotten damaged shell with perfectly good running gear, and it made sense to us to put it in a Mini. In addition, the 3S GTE that came in the Celica is probably what's made this project possible at all. It leans back at quite an angle. If we'd have used a Honda or an Evo or anything else, I don't think we'd have been able to package it well enough to get it all under the standard front end. If we'd have started with a brand new shell, we'd have still had to strip the whole thing apart, cut most of it out before we even started putting this running gear in. So why bother with the expense? Well, of course we are, but all in good time. The same reason we're not constantly shouting at each other and mysteriously breaking irreplaceable parts, because this is real life and not some bullshit TV custom car show. And that's the problem with the word custom. For a lot of people, that means going and buying some nice bits and bolting them on your car. When you're actually doing custom work, you've got to make the bits to bolt on and then somewhere to bolt them on, and that just takes a lot of time. Actually, when the shell is painted and all the bits that go back on it are refreshed, it should just be a case of bolting it all back together and it's finished. If it all goes to plan when we get there, it's not through a series of happy accidents. We've gone about the planning of this build quite deliberately. If we'd have just got all of the running gear in there and got it going, tried it up the road, we'd never have gone back to revisit all of the stuff that I think would make this car successful. The aircon, the radio, the interior, it's all things that I want that I just know, because I know us and I know projects, they would never have happened. He's right, of course. If we'd just thrown the running gear in, added an exhaust, given it some brakes, a fuel tank, and then wired it up, we probably wouldn't have bothered with the comfy seats, the remote central locking, the electric windows, the rain sensing wipers, the stereo, the heater and air conditioning, the rear wiper, the high-level brake light, the standalone Link ECU, the custom centre console and trim panels, and we almost certainly wouldn't have bothered with the key fob actuated flip front. But that's all done now, so we're really not too far off from starting this thing up. Whether you'll live long enough to see that, I can't tell you. You could tell me. I'm a doctor. No, I mean, I don't know. Well, can't you take a guess? Well, not for another few months. You can't take a guess for another few months? There are no more or less brackets on this car than are absolutely necessary. In fact, there are no more brackets on this car than any other car in the world. The thing is, normally when you buy a part, it comes with its own bracket, or you're using the brackets on the car that were originally there to do the job they still need to do. The difference is, we show you making brackets because we have to make the parts as well and attach them to the car. More than a few people have questioned our decision to use flexible brake lines throughout the car, saying it could lead to a spongy pedal. Well, all we can do is draw on experience of cars we've actually finished and tell you no, it won't. Contrary to popular belief, when we do have a summer over here, it can get really hot. But anyway, who says it's only going to get driven in the UK? We couldn't actually have built the thing in the first place with a welded on front end. Plus, if we need to get anything out of the engine bay, struts, radiator, stuff like that, they're all too big to come out of the standard mini hull. So that's why we need a flip front. Why have a separate opening bonnet? Well, we don't really need to be removing the entire front just to check the oil and water and top up the washers. Well, obviously it's going to weigh more than a standard mini. 
But this was never meant to be a competition car, so the finish weight doesn't really matter. Almost all of the extra mass is going to come from the Toyota running gear. For the Group A rally car, Toyota made sure everything was strong and reliable, so none of this stuff is as light as it could be. The other work that we've done doesn't really amount to a hill of beans weight-wise, and that includes using thin aluminium sheet with a factory used hardboard or plastic. Oh, and by the way, all of these aluminium interior parts are going to be trimmed, so don't worry about the rattling. The battery is bolted down inside the car, and the jump post is here under the bonnet. If we didn't have a manual bonnet catch, we'd have to take the seat out to jump start the car should the battery be completely flat, and ain't nobody got time for that. There was no point in adding grommets or wiring protection until the loom was finalised, so that'll all get done before it goes in at final assembly. Uh, we can't. There is no room underneath the car anywhere to fit something the size of a turbo, let alone all of the pipework that would be associated with it. We did consider lots of different ideas, but it turns out the only actual space we have left for a turbo is where it would be conventionally, even though that's led us to a less than conventional manifold. Well, we're on the subject. You guys need our thanks and congratulations for your considered back and forward debate about the relative merits or otherwise of this particular manifold design. Without, it has to be said, it all degrading into lots of name calling, capital letters, and jokes about your mama. So we'll finish off with what's probably the biggest point of conjecture amongst our viewers. What colour are we going to paint it? Uh, this has, up until this point, been quite a closely guarded secret, but Seems it's you lot 